The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Five and a half years ago, when This Is Your FBI made its first appearance on the air, the Equitable Society established a tradition of helpful, intelligently presented commercial messages. Listen to the middle commercial tonight, and you'll see that we're still running true to form. Tonight, we're going to talk briefly to fathers and mothers about establishing an equitable education fund for their children. This is the painless way to pay for a college education. Interested? Then don't fail to give full attention to this informing message from the Equitable Society due in about 14 minutes. Tonight's FBI file, The Gold Rush Stick-Up. As ages are measured among nations, the United States is a young country, its 170-odd years making it a figurative babe in arms. However, in even that shorter period, our way of living has changed so much that the old way is almost forgotten. Almost, but not entirely, especially in the western part of the nation. Throughout the west, there are communities that set aside days and sometimes weeks during which their former days of glory are annually recalled. The highway for miles around is cluttered with signs proclaiming this to be Old Timers Week, El Dorado Week, or whatever name the townspeople have chosen for the celebration. The local citizenry, most of whom dress normally during the remainder of the year, get their mail-order cowboy clothes off the shelves and welcome the visitors. Visitors they usually call sir or ma'am, but who for this week can be addressed only as dude or partner. Taken by and large, it amounts to harmless fun. And if it does nothing but recall the olden days, it's well worth the trouble everyone goes to. For the glories of the past are the things of which tradition is made. Occasionally, though, this pleasant picture is disturbed. Disturbed by the discovery that among the fun makers, there have been those interested in something more than tradition. They have instead been interested only in crime. <laughs> Tonight's file opens in a small western town during one of those community celebrations. This one is called Gold Rush Week. Along the crowded main street, a middle-aged man walks toward the center of town, accompanied by a friend. Delightful little town, ain't it? Yeah. So good to get away from them big cities with all the noise. Uh-huh. Oh, that could put me on the first train that's leaving town. You can't blow now. Yes, I can. What about the tunnel? Well, we can leave it. After all the time we spent digging it... I'm not putting up with any more of this. The Duke won't like it, George. Well, the Duke hasn't had to spend three weeks in this shooting gallery. He hasn't had to wear these musical comedy clothes either. Look at us. Full beards, leather pants. Hi there, partners. Get lost, you bum. Now, now we get another parade. They ain't parading. They're just standing around up near the theater. Yeah. Hey, maybe they found our tunnel. You don't think they'd be celebrating with a brass band, do you? Come on, let's see what's going on. Somebody's sitting on a horse and making a speech. It looks like that rum dumb mayor. Right over the ballroom. 
Remind me to miss that? But the big surprise of the week is the one I'm saving for, for, for the last. What's that? Uh, uh, this building you're standing in front of. Come on, let's blow. Oh, the wait, first a minute, wait a minute. Theater in this part of the state having open for business exactly 75 years ago. Good. Now, tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon. In honor of this occasion, we've imported a group of genuine actors. Alive? Who are alive, yes. Who are yes, sir. Who are going to put on the same show. Hey. Right uh, that fixes the everything. Yeah, that means he'll be acting while we're... That was before. I know. In what do we do? That's up to the Duke. We we'll just have to wait until he gets in time. Meanwhile, at an FBI field office some miles away, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just signing the register when Agent Ben Cook approaches. Very distinguished signature. Oh. Hello, Ben. Hi, Jim. You signing in or out? Out, I'm sorry to say. I haven't seen you around the office lately. Look, I've slept in more beds in the last month than George Washington ever did. <laughs> you know that the boss has given me a break when he took me off of everything else and told me to concentrate on finding one man? Uh, who's that? You ever hear of a safe cracker called the Duke? Not that I know of. Well, I wish I hadn't either. The only description we've got is from an arrest record that's 27 years old, and the only picture was taken then. Yeah? Where's it been since? Out of action, as far as we know, until two years ago. Well, what do we want this man for? Bank jobs. Got any leads at all to work on? Well, no good ones, Ben. Without any current ident, about all I've been able to do is follow his trail of robberies. Mm -hmm. So far, he's led me from Auburn to DeKalb, then to Greensboro, from... There to Crawfordville, to Warren, Blackford, to Mount Vernon, and from Mount Vernon back here. It's about a perfect circle. Yeah, just about. Well, if our boy's in town, why are you leaving? Well, his job here was ten days ago. He's already struck a hundred miles away at Morgantown. Not likely he'd still be there then, is it? No, no. His pattern has been to move after each job, but yeah, maybe I can get a description or find out where he went from there. Well, see you when I get back, Ben. <laughs> First train I ever saw with cobwebs on the locomotive. George, you see Duke any place? Uh, 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 not yet. Maybe miss a train. Nobody could miss this train. Oh, there he is. Hey, Duke. Duke. Duke, over here. Oh, George, is that you? Yeah. Well, I didn't know you were the costume and the beard. Let me take you back, Duke. Thank you. The hotel's right around the corner. Good. Uh, Duke, we run into a little trouble. On the tunnel? Yeah, on one end of it. What do you mean? Well, we ran it from the abandoned theater into the bank, just like you laid it out. Yes? Yeah. So today, they're reopening the theater for one performance. They're carving a 75-year-old turkey. Oh, fine. Got any ideas, Duke? Is the bank closed this afternoon? Yeah, but most of the money that's been spent here this week will be moved out of their vaults by Monday. I know that. What do you think we should do? I've got a schedule to stick to. We'll go ahead with the job. With the show going on and all? Yes. You want to back out? Oh, no, no. How about you, George? I'll go along with the action. All right. Let's get to work right now. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Well, a traveling man. How was Morgantown? I didn't even have to unpack my bags. I got there, found out that the Duke had come back here. Oh, no. Yeah, well, I've cut him down a little, though. When I started, he was a month ahead of me. Now he's only three days. <laughs> Got any leads up there? Oh, just one item. I learned that he carried his tools in a violin case. I was a help at this end. How? Well, I contacted all transportation terminals. The ticket seller at the bus station remembered the violin case. Was he headed out of town again? Yeah, Jim, didn't you say this character has an arrest record 27 years old? Yeah, that's right. Well, then he's no youngster. Yeah, I know, but he sure gets around. I checked his pattern. He only works two months out of the year. That's what makes him so tough to catch. How long has he been going so far this year? Seven weeks. 
Oh, I was just about ready to go under again. Yeah. We've wired the police in every town within a 200-mile radius and asked them to be on the lookout for a man with a violin case. When did the wires go out? Oh, two hours ago. The minute anybody answers, I hit the road again. Just to follow me, Duke. The tunnel's right over here. Where's Johnny? He's locking that other door. That'll keep any nosy actors out. Never. You're dab down here. Well, it ain't bad if you're a bat. It doesn't grow on trees, you know. I'll never sacrifice There's the cover. All right, lift it and let's take a look. It's not much of a tunnel, but we Don't call it home. George, over by the tunnel. Oh. <laughs> have you got my bag? Yeah, here. You Thank you. Read the mortgage when you I'll take an extra it. flashlight. Here you are. Now, you both there got your guns? Uh -huh. yeah. Fine, stay here. I'm going notice. to work. Cook speaking. Jim Taylor, Ben. Hi, Jim. Where are you? Centerville. Is your man there? No, he went to River Junction, but he just left for there yesterday, so we're closing in on him. Oh, Ben, would you do me a favor? What's that? I've been trying to get through to the sheriff at River Junction, but his line's been busy. I'll get on him. Okay, now look, when you talk to him, Ben, you can tell him about that violin case and one of the lead. The Duke is growing a beard. I'm afraid that's a dead one. Oh, why? I was in River Junction a couple of days ago. This is gold rush week down there. Every man in town's got a beard. Oh, well, tell the sheriff to warn the people at the bank and anybody else in town who's got a safe. Aha! So there you are. Ever strong. What are you Duke's doing? It's taking a long time. No, it just seems long having to listen to that stuff up there. The acting? Yeah, the acting. If I'd have known about it, I'd have hit Duke for a bigger cut. Is that the dam or a team of horses? Hey, I just thought of something. What? We left the car in the hotel no. garage. Well? No. We got to go all the way back there for the getaway. Johnny, nobody even Everybody knows about this job until the bank is open Monday morning. We could get out of here riding turtles. I hope the show ends before Duke finishes. Why? I want to know how it comes out. I think I've got a... Hey, that wasn't in the show. I know. It came from the bank. Come on, let's get, let's get in there. Right. You got your flash? Yeah. We better not show any light. Somebody must have spotted Duke, huh? Yeah, now get your gun ready. I got it. This end's open. Now, now watch. Watch yourself. Watch yourself coming up. Okay. See anything? You see anything? Huh? Something, somebody's laying on the floor over there. Duke, I can't tell. There's also somebody by the vault. Come on now. Quiet. Quiet now. Don't move. Huh? Hey, it's Duke. It's the Duke. What happened? We heard shots. Sheriff came in. Is that him on the floor? Yes. What do we do? We're finishing the job. This vault's ready to go now. You boys go back to the hotel. I'll meet you there. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of the FBI. Now a special message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society to fathers and mothers of young children. You'll find the time passes much more quickly than you think. Before you realize it, 1960 or 65 will be here, and the postman will bring you a letter from your youngster that reads like this. 
Dear Mom and Dad, this is a wonderful experience starting here at college. Believe me, I'm going to learn a lot. Your boy or girl will have three good reasons for wanting to make good in college. First, college men and women earn more money. Prexy Robinson made a speech to the whole freshman class yesterday. He said that college men earn $72,000 more during their working years than the fellows who miss out on a college education. Second, college men land the bigger job. Then he said, out of every 16 men earning $10,000 a year and up, 15 have college educations. That's 15 to 1 in the college man's favor. Third, college men get more out of life. They gain an all-round culture, an appreciation of the arts and literature that means even more to them than their increased earning power. Remember those three points, mother and dad, and say to yourself here and now, I'm not going to leave my family's education to chance. I'm going to make sure with an equitable education fund. An equitable education fund? What's that? It's the painless way to pay for your children's college education. In this equitable society plan, you start when your children are young. Then each year you pay a sum of money that doesn't hurt, an amount that scarcely makes a dent in your budget. When your youngster's ready for college, the money's all ready for him. That's spreading the cost of education over 10 or 15 years instead of taking a beating in four. Right. Now, suppose the father dies or becomes totally disabled. Then no more payments are necessary. The fund becomes fully established. When the youngster is ready for college, he gets the same education as if his dad had lived. So don't delay a day longer. Let your equitable society representative show you how little it costs to start an equitable education fund. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Gold Rush Stick-Up. America is a nation difficult to describe in a few short words, and certainly, therefore, almost impossible to picture in one. However, if a person were to find himself pinned down in a situation where he had to tell the story of this country in a single word, he could do far worse than to choose the noun progress. For here is a land and a people dedicated to advancement. The field of law enforcement has been no exception. With such great forward strides in scientific methods of investigation having been made, that police work is no longer a job, but a profession. The men who now protect you against the ravages of crime have studied to attain their positions, and through those courses of study have come to certain inescapable conclusions, one of which is pertinent to tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. There are in those files the records of a great number of men and women who have committed one crime, been apprehended, served a term in prison, and upon release, followed a decent law-abiding existence. Others, however, seemingly were determined to continue their criminal careers. In those cases, the crimes committed invariably grew more serious, and life became cheap to them, so long, that is, as the life being taken was not their own. Tonight's FBI file continues later that afternoon at the sheriff's office in River Junction. Special Agent Jim Taylor enters and is met by Agent Ben Cook. Ben. Ben, what are you doing here? I reported your story to the SAC. He sent me up here to meet you. I'm afraid the Duke beat us both. You mean he's been in action already? Yeah, he took the local bank about an hour ago. Well, didn't you ever get through to the sheriff? Yeah, yeah. After I warned him, he went to the bank. Duke got him as soon as he stepped inside. Oh. Is he badly hurt? He's in the hospital. Shoulder wound. Did you get any details on the robbery? The bank was entered through a tunnel from the next building. Yeah. Duke must have had some accomplices because there were three sets of footprints around the tunnel. Uh-huh. When was the sheriff found, Ben? Only about ten minutes after he was shot. He came to and called for help outside the bank. Mm-hmm. What about roadblocks? Well, they were set up immediately. Good. Then the chances are the Duke is still here in town. We might be better off if he weren't, Jim. What? There's thousands of visitors here all celebrating. It'd be next to impossible to pick him up. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. 
Now, there are three hotels here in town. I'm going to check all of them and see what I can learn on recent arrivals. I'd like to take a look at that tunnel, Ben. Why don't I go over to the bank, and when you finish with the hotels, you meet me there. Listen to that. I almost wish I was in a nice, quiet jail. Hello, boys. Hiya, Duke. Did you get the dough? Yes. How much? Over 20000 hey, That's okay. Where have you been, Duke? We got here about an hour ago. I've been watching the cops check every car leaving town. Have they got roadblocks already? Yes. Hmm. And it ain't going to be easy getting out of here. We could take a train. I went by the station. They're going through every piece of luggage. Hmm. Hey, how about burying the dough here and we can come back for it later? Well, that's not a bad idea. And the safest place to stash it around here is right under that mattress. The way they clean this room, it'll be next year before they find it. Boys, pack your bags. We're getting out of this hotel. Why? The cops will be checking the place with strangers. What will we do when we hit the street? Yeah, there must be something going on that we can duck into. There's a rodeo tonight. Oh, now, who wants to see that? We do. There's only one road through this town. After the Rodeo, it'll be jammed, and we're going to be on it. Uh, Jim? Over here, Ben. Here, by the tunnel. Oh, oh, okay. You know, that's a real neat job they did. They went through the theater wall, the bank wall. The day of the job, they just had to break through this flooring here. Mm-hmm. Working from the abandoned theater, they had all the time they needed. I oh, know. Hey, how did you make out? Well, I went to the three hotels. And? I've had so many people checking in and out the last week that their records were hopelessly jumbled. Uh, if we only had a good description on the Duke, or even his Confederates. Jim, I was thinking on the way over... Someone must have seen those men coming in and out of the theater. No, I explored that before I came in here, Ben. I couldn't find anyone who had. Any report from the roadblocks? No, I just called. So far, no suspects. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ben. Huh? They dug this hole from the theater, but there was no dirt around the excavation. Yeah, you're right. That follows a pattern that I read about in one of the Duke's earlier jobs. Come on. Let's get into the theater and look for that dirt. Yo, Ben. Yeah, Jim? Come here a minute, will you? Where are you? Near the stage door. Uh, okay. I don't trust myself in this place. I tried to walk through a door a minute ago and found I was painted on some scenery. No. I found the dirt. Good. Yeah. Right here in this dressing room. Look. All wrapped up in newspapers. Just about fills the room. <laughs> Such a tidy little job. Ah, well, we've got to untidy it. What do you mean? I'm afraid we're going to have to take each bundle out and examine the papers. What for, Jim? Well, if we can find the oldest one, it could help us solve this case. place where I'm going to be more than 20 minutes from the nearest racing farm. Look at that guy, Ryan. Well, he almost made it. These guys are pretty good. Kid, you never seen our Carol on a two-year-old. Hey, let the boy have a good time, George. Look at this crowd. They're still coming in. Hey, have you got a piece of the gate? George, the bigger the crowd, the better it is for us. I'll never be able to frisk all these people. I don't know whether I'd rather get nailed or have to sit and watch the rest of this thing. That's Pete Chance being carried out of the arena. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> and now, out of shoot number one, Bernie Shaw, riding 
That horse is pretty wild. He ain't gonna have nothing on me if we don't blow this crib. Ben, tell the riders we're not a program. Yo, Ben. Yeah. There they are. What? Hey, fellas, we'd like to talk to you. Well, what for? Don't reach. We both got guns under the programs. What is this, a heist? We're special agents of the FBI. You're all under arrest. <laughs> George Morgan, Johnny Stark, and Claude White, alias the Duke, were tried and convicted of bank robbery. Each was sentenced to serve a 20-year term in a federal penitentiary. Special Agents Taylor and Cook were able to locate Claude White, alias the Duke, and his accomplices because the theory about the newspapers wrapped around the dirt proved to be correct. Having gotten the date on which the tunnel was begun, they checked every hotel, rooming house, and motel register. Searching for a party who had checked in on the 15th, the date which appeared on the yellowed newspaper. George Morgan and Johnny Stark were the only ones who had come to River Junction that day and remained through Gold Rush Week. When agents Taylor and Cook learned Morgan and Stark had a visitor that afternoon, they were certain they had located the right pair. However, the party had checked out earlier in the evening, but investigation showed they had purchased seats for the rodeo at the ticket booth in the hotel lobby. The location of their seats was secured and the two special agents went to the ground where the rodeo was being held. They used the pretense of being program salesmen so they might approach the trio of criminals without incurring their suspicion. For had they been given the slightest hint they were about to be apprehended, any or all of them might have started shooting, might have injured or killed some of the other spectators. This way was safer, and even more important, it got the job done, the job of removing three more criminals from circulation. Now, one last word to fathers and mothers. Of all the things you can do for your children, there's no greater proof of your love for them than an equitable education fund. They'll be grateful for it as long as they live. Your boy or girl may only say a few words like, Thanks, Mom, and thank you, Dad. But you know from the look in his eye and the ring in his voice that he'll never forget your foresight in starting an equitable education fund. Right now, make that wise resolution to see your equitable representative soon. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a reenactment of hitherto undisclosed facts on World War II espionage. Its subject, attempted sabotage. Its title, Prisoner of War. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Dan Barton, Walter Catlett, Marlo Dwyer, Ed Gargan, Lamont Johnston, and John McIntyre. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Prisoner of War on... This is your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next.